Well, we'll call the meeting to order. Close this door. Appreciate everybody showing up today so we could have a quorum. Is this everybody? This is us, except for Kelly, the chair. Yeah. And we're recruiting what, three more? Three, yes. In yeah. April. In April, April right I now. think. April. Yeah. Okay. So um, we want to remember to check our own circles and see if there's any, as I mentioned last week, see if there's anybody that you think would make a good board member for the museum. Okay, uh, public invited to be heard. Anybody have anything to say, Sheila? Not a word. <laughs> <laughs> She's our public today. <coughs> okay, we missed you last week, or last week. I was somewhere, I can't remember. <laughs> I was away. Eric, was it Eric, I think was his name? Yeah, Eric. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, does everybody have a chance to look at the minutes? And uh, as usual, we're expertly done. Is there a move? Anybody want to make a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a Linda? Is there a second? Bruce, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Here we go. No, no accessions this month, which will make somebody by the name of Mark. I think he's a volunteer at the. Oh, oh yes, Mark is. I one sat of our next to him at the volunteer yeah. reception, okay. and he said, "Do you always have to approve?" <laughs> because he keeps, I don't know, he does like catalogs or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. He said, "Do you ever reject anything?" <laughs> We do. We see there's a lot that, that you don't uh, you don't ever see things that people uh -huh. offer us that you know don't relate to yeah. Lawn Mod at all. Anyway, Mark will be happy this month. <laughs> but yeah, so he's when, catching it. Up, when we between the transition, we we got pretty far backlogged on cataloging. So um, Mark is having to deal with some of that. <laughs> All right, uh, no session. So let's go into our reports. And the first one is the report of the journal. All right. So um, I'll get a few highlights. If you haven't taken a look out our windows, the Stewart family courtyard is uh, in process. So there's all kinds of dirt being moved right now. Um, if you were here earlier in the day, you might have felt the building shake a little bit because they've been doing a lot of compacting of the soil. So uh, all in order to give us a nice flat uh, courtyard with hopefully great drainage and, and a much more usable uh, facility uh, for most of the year. So we're very excited about that. Um, as you can see, they've totally dismantled all of the, the old pavilion that was there, and there's a big hole in the ground where the new performance uh, pavilion will be. So, um, we are right now, I think the latest completion date is uh, somewhere mid-May. That's already shifted a couple weeks as they've had some snow to deal with. So um, uh, we are um, not planning on using the grassy area this, this summer just to give it a chance to root down and, and get uh, fully established. And we'll be uh, opening it this fall. Um, so you won't have the concerts there this summer? The summer concerts summer. will be out in uh, parks around the city. We're going to oh, have three okay. uh, <laughs> parks around the city. Just to sort of let people know, hey, you know. Which parks? Um, I uh, don't think Justin has chosen them yet. Uh, I know Kenamoto Park was one that was um, seemed like a good possibility. But he's working with the folks in parks to find ones that have the right uh, sort of infrastructure for a, for a big crowd um, and we should be you know 
lots of those in a couple of weeks. I will also mention uh, under administration that uh, we're starting to work on a code of ethics for the museum. So this is something you'll see coming back uh, to you in a couple of months. Um, it's one of the kind of standard documents that museums should have um, according to the American Alliance of Museums. Uh, we've never had one, so uh, we're going to start the process and then bring it to you all for some further discussion. Uh, well, I guess the briberies will have to stop. Huh? That that is you know, one of the elements is you know Bruce uh, his okay. picture will be in the code of ethics. Public enemy. Uh, but, uh, exhibits. We have uh, Jared Thompson here with us, our curator of exhibits. So if you have any questions about uh, any of the elements of your exhibits, feel free to ask him. If not, uh, I'll highlight uh, we have already opened registration for summer camp. Seems hard to believe under education. Um, uh, before we know it, we will have our summer camps. Um, they're going to be using a fenced in area out in front of the museum this summer as the courtyard gets established. Um, but uh, we're still going to have a full array of our regular summer camps. And a lot of them this year will be taught by um, museum staff. We've hired some additional staff so that rather than contracting out uh, our camps, which is basically a you know, uh, no net gain to our bottom line, we're able to bring in staff. And so we'll actually hopefully be able to uh, make some money on our, on our camps this year. So you and Joanne will be teaching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, uh, some great new folks. Uh, Henry Anderson, uh, Julie Benoit, uh, our new staff, Buzz and Macca, and um, so the staff, Eric. Um, so Anne and Lee are what the city calls permanent or you know, uh, benefited staff. And then uh, Henry and Julie are both uh, part-time non-benefited. So uh, we bring them on as needed for uh, classes and so forth. And so they'll be pretty much full-time in the summer months teaching those camps. Uh, we'll skip on down to art and public places. Wanted to give you all a heads up because this is one of those things that you never know. It may pass completely under the radar or it may become a big issue. Um, so the Safety and Justice Center, um, which is basically at 3rd and Kimbark Street, uh, was built in 1993 and is undergoing a massive renovation. Um, they actually, when they did an assessment a couple of years ago, there's a sort of front rotunda on that and they said this is just about to fail. Um, so um, there's major work that that building will be undergoing and unfortunately there is a very large mosaic mural that is uh, mounted or basically integral to the clock tower on the safety and justice building and the clock tower is coming down and unfortunately they cannot salvage the mural so um, that uh, has been deaccessioned by the art and public places commission um, they will be putting in a new artwork at the conclusion of the project, but um, sadly one of the first pieces of public art in the city is um, going to have to be uh, removed. They're, they looked at really hard, is there any way to salvage it? And because it is basically integral to the building as it stands now, there's no way for it to be salvaged. So, um, you know, Certainly something we will be working with the city's communications team to let folks know about it. We don't want this to be you know, swept under the rug or anything, but um, you know, um, certainly something that could come up if anyone does um, have any questions, feel free to refer them to myself or to Angela Braille, our public places administrator. I would assume that. that somebody will be taking some type of photographs of, mm -hmm. of it so yes. that it will be, be you know, very well documented yeah. um, we've 
reached out to the artists and let them know they actually have the right if they wanted to to try to salvage it on their own and they have not responded um, so um, uh, multiple attempts by multiple channels have not been able to get a response out of um, where is it on the uh, right. um, if you uh, walk uh, into the front doors of the Safety and Justice Building. Uh, you'll walk. Um, oh, I see. It's on the inside. It's it's basically right at the front, but it is kind of enclosed. There's a big uh, arc of, sort of concrete ribs that come out of the building, and it is um, inside those ribs. So if you're just standing looking at the building, it's easy to miss. But as you kind of walk up to the front of it, you'll see there's a a mural that's right below the, uh, the clock that hasn't worked for many years and will, will be coming down as part of the whole project. So, just wanted you all to be aware of that since um, it is something that um, uh, there could be, you know, uh, public concern over. Well, there'll probably be at least one letter to the newspaper call, you know, at least mm -hmm. or two, you know. Are they expanding the building or are they just uh, renovating? Um, mostly renovation, but some expansion, as I understand. Oh, okay. Having jail cells, things like that. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot more cops and public safety uh, than when the building was built in 1993. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we definitely need more space. In that, so. Is this the, are you talking about the public safety building? Um, yeah, just talking about the uh, the accession of the artwork. Oh. He was talking about that the uh, the building needs to accommodate more auto thieves. So, um, there's some of that, but a lot of it is the foundations of the building was. <laughs> um, it's in bad. I've I've been in the public safety looking and just the foundation, the um, the cracks. Um, in like key parts so like if you have a supporting beam yeah. and you look along the floor where all the <coughs> concrete would and up the rug it's just all well it sounds like we're cracked. fully constructed to begin with yeah exactly. it's like the civic, civic center too yeah you can carry a lot of weight so like some of the public or art public places mm -hmm. the you know some of the uh, artwork that they have in there if they put in anything too heavy it can Crash down <laughs> to the garage. So, so yeah. Lightweight. Will be lightweight. The, lightweight uh, is, the, is the theme. The new, whatever new artwork yes, goes in yes, will be animal. much lighter. People move animals. <laughs> yeah. Paper. So, so, let's see. Uh, moving on. Um, Saturday, June 22nd. Mark your calendars for. A fundraiser at the museum. Um, it is called Touch a Truck. So we are going to be working uh, with a number of different city departments. They're very excited to be here, show off some of their cool pieces of equipment, and uh, we will be selling tickets uh, for families and anyone who wants to come in. You can actually come in and sit in, you know. A city garbage truck, a uh, city fire truck, the public works uh, trucks, parks, trucks, all kinds of things. So um, we're going to have them parked out. Uh, we will be uh, filling the museum lot with all of these vehicles and then uh, parking folks both in the rec center lot and probably have shuttles from the innovation center down the road. So it's going to be a very popular event. Okay. Um, and I already mentioned um, got stats on our visitor services, um, a lot going on with marketing, and then under volunteer and evaluation coordination, we have a great volunteer appreciation Valentine's Day event. Uh, um, was that last week? Um, yeah. So, yes. Um, we were able to, to be here. Appreciate uh, coming out. Uh, meet up with other volunteers and see what, what folks are doing for the museum. And learn more about Longmont through the 
trivia. Trivia of the game. Sims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it was a team effort because I don't put me that much credit. <laughs> Any questions on the director's report? Okay, thanks. Um, for the chair, I don't think Callie had anything that she wanted to bring forward. Uh, unfinished business. I don't, I was looking through the minutes. I don't think there's anything that we are still going to carry forward. The vision statement was approved last month. New business. So we need to designate the official posting places, dates, and times of the museum advisory board meetings. Joanne, remind me it's here at the Museum Civic Center and online? Correct. And just, um, we should have done this last month, but your secretary forgot to have you do it. So, and the, and just designate that your meetings are held on the third Wednesday of each month, 4.30 p.m. at the Longmont Museum. So if anyone wants to vote that motion and make it official. Anybody like to move, uh, Catherine? I'm second. I'm second. I'm second it. You moved oh, it. I moved. And, and Bob seconded. Yes. Okay. That uh, those we would be the, our meeting times would be posted <coughs> online at the Civic Center and here. So everybody uh, agree with that? Say aye. 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 The opposition. Just in many more places. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the motion passes. Any board comments about any topics or groups? No. No, I usually interrupt when Eric is giving us the directors. That's why that's why I offer my comments. <laughs> Well, I'm sure. I, I apologize for that. <laughs> well, there are always good comments, I think. It makes us think about some things. I appreciate those. I'd like to, uh, when did they start the uh, construction out there? Uh, uh, Mid-January. Mid-January, yeah. Pretty fast project. Yep. Uh, yeah, they've finished do uh, quite a lot already, and uh, so I'm yeah, excited well, to see it done. Hopefully, when it snows or it rains, the water won't back up into the museum. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since we had that particular problem, problem but uh, certainly the the swamp that that uh, yeah. central area of the courtyard becomes is um, not great for any kind of event. So it must be so. regraded that then. So they're actually going to put all of the drainage underground right now. The, the downspouts all go basically onto that, um, onto what was a grassy area. And they're going to just pipe it directly into underground pipes and then what have been kind of a grassy area closest to the museum will become hardscape, so it'll be much flatter, much um, be able to be used um, for a lot longer period of time. Uh, since we don't have to deal with uh, the wet yeah. conditions. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Uh, Where do you? I, it might have been in your report, but I'm going to miss. How's the capital campaign coming? We are at 85% uh, uh, of our goal. Um, and um, we have, um, January was kind of a quiet period uh, for the campaign. We actually just met this week with our capital campaign committee. Um, so our two big fundraisers uh, this year, one will be the Touch of Truck event and then the other on September 7th will be a 
Gayla that will hopefully wrap up uh, the campaign. Um, Megan also just sent in a letter to the Betcher Foundation in Denver. Um, that's kind of the first step of a multi-step process to apply for a grant through uh, Betcher. And then um, we're planning a couple of smaller events, uh, farm to table dinner at Olin Farms as a fundraiser and probably an event here at the museum that um, may be similar if any of you came to the walkthrough event we had uh, back in November where we're kind of touring you through um, where the expansion will be you know, now we've got an opportunity to show folks you know here's here's the first phase um, you can also look at the, the offices which are now completed and moved into um, and um, so those those will be kind of some of the uh, fundraiser events and we're you know, continuing to contact folks reach out um, and we expect we'll be doing that all the way until hopefully we uh, finish the campaign off uh, at the gala in September. And what's the date of that gala? Uh, September 7th. September 7th. Okay. Oh, that's great. 85%. <laughs> Yeah, we've, we've had great support. Uh, in fact, um, our consultants, uh, Prismatic uh, Consulting, that kind of laid out what they thought uh, we could get from individuals, corporate um, foundations. Uh, they thought we could get about a hundred thousand from individuals, and we've already well surpassed that. So I mean, we just feel very much to the support from the community. Uh, just as a reminder, I remember uh, form, our former board member, uh, Dale, had suggested uh, and encouraged that it would be, and this probably already has occurred, but that, that it would be good if each board member contributed something. There's no minimum or maximum. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I know from my experience in the healthcare industry, it's always good to be able to say when people ask, oh, has your board or has someone, and you're able to say, oh, yeah, we have 100% uh, have contributed. So don't, uh, we're not expecting certainly hundreds of thousands from the board. Uh, but that would yes, be a, foundation it would not be rejected either. absolutely but uh, that's one of the things they ask is has a hundred percent of your board uh contributed yeah. and so it's, it's very helpful so go to their estates to the <laughs> does anybody have anything else they would like to bring up before we move to adjourn and move into our featured presentation this evening would somebody like to move we adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. Well, there we go. Here we are. <laughs> and that was about, I can't see. I am 454. All right. Well, we have, uh, I'm sure it'll be an interesting presentation by your, Jared. Uh, I know having gone through several of the exhibits since I've been on the board, they're all amazing. And, uh, I don't know how they get so creative, and, and uh, I'm sure it just happens, right? Yeah, bringing us through the process and kind of showing you some of the behind the scenes.